What up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Today, I'm going to go through my CES 2019 rig. It's going to be pretty similar to last year's CES NAM. Uh, all the events for 2019, this is usually the rig that I'm going to use, and we're going to go through it all through my CES NAM 2019 rig review. Uh, and, of course, you know that every year I go out to CES 2000, well, in this case, 2019. Happy New Year, everybody. I go out and I get content, uh, content from, you know, interviews and product reviews, first looks at products, stuff that uh, might not be coming out, might be coming out, uh, might be looking for other cool people to be part of the whole uh, whole experience with. You get the idea. So we're here and this is what I'm going to use. And what's really exciting is just the little things that I can do now uh, that I haven't been able to do in years past. Now, I've been going, this is actually going to be my 10th year going out to CES 2000. Uh, well, in that case, uh, any CES for that matter, not 2000, whatever. It was started in 2009. I went out with uh, Todd Cochran and Andy McCaskey. And we did one-on-one -on -one interviews. We use rigs kind of like this. Of course, 10, 11 years ago, that was a lot different types of rigs. But they still were media-based. They still were media card-based. Now we've got 4K cameras and high-end content. And we're not doing those little streams with the little flip cameras anymore. We're using our phones to get anything extra. I'm not bringing out a big DSLR to take a picture of a product where I can use my phone because that's what you need to, to get it out into the world there. So this year, uh, last year, I'm going to be doing a lot of interviews. You'll see it in the post over at uh, youtube.com forward slash geekazine or geekazine.com. And then of course, Facebook. Now we're also adding the live stream and I'm gonna talk about that right now. Let's go into the full rig. I'm gonna show you piece by piece by piece and then go from there. Now. First of all, this is the Sony 4K AX700 model. Let me show you that one on the screen here. And of course, I'll have these links all at uh, geekazine.com. So you can check it out there. So it's basically 4K HDR. This is now a couple years old. It's still very relevant. As you can see, it's a, it's pretty expensive, but I can do a lot of 4K video uh, out of this. And that's what really helps with uh, my videos is a better qu quality content. Now, I won't be able to do 4K uh, when I'm streaming, and I'll talk about that in a minute and, uh, and uh, yeah, go from there. So we've got that. We've got the Sony uh, dual lav or dual wireless uh, receiver system, uh, two channels in this. Uh, this is basically the gear I have, but I actually have another lav system, which I will be using. I'll be micing them up. I'll be micing myself up. In fact, it is right here. This is one of the labs right here, uh, which I'll be wearing pretty much all day. I'll just hook it on my body and feed it through my clothes and not have to worry about it from there. Uh, if you want to see it from the PTZ side, here it is. This is the Sony 4K right here camera. Uh, and then, of course, the wireless unit is right here. I got the shoe mount which feeds right into the camera, so there's no extra cables there. And that makes this system really nice and, because I don't have to feed extra cables unless I need to. And I'll have those extra cables with me just in case, especially uh, if I need to do any type of feed into, you know, like a line during a keynote or, or anything like that. So, all right, so we have the camera. You saw the wireless unit. Next up is uh, how we're going to go wireless with uh, to Facebook, which is where I'm planning to go. And that is through this right here. It's called the Epifan Webcaster X2. Um, it's basically a simple encoder for Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and other, other systems. So it's a really nice uh, device that allows you to do one button streaming. And what, is, what does it mean by one button streaming? I configure it. I, you need to have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse so I configure it before I go. And then when I'm ready to go, all I have to do is 
push this button right here and it's off and running. Now it's not on right now because I have it turned off. Uh, but as you can see, it's set up onto the device. So I am ready to go from there. Now, this is this is just super exciting because the one thing that this didn't have was a mount to any type of uh, camera. So I couldn't, I'd have to Velcro it to the side or something like that. But then I found this thing right here and it's just, it, it, it changed the whole thing. What this is, is an iPad slash iPhone holder, selfie stick, simply, except it does both. Now, just the fact that it's big enough or small enough to actually fit the webcaster at 4.5 inches is great. But the fact that I can put the iPhone in there is better. Even though I'm not putting an iPhone in there, I'm actually putting the battery in there. Now, I'm using, I, through time, I got a, a couple high-end milliamp batteries. Now, this one is a 10,000 milliamp battery. So it should go for a few hours. And on here right now, I have one of the tough tested uh, batteries, which if it falls off the rig, then it's not going to break apart or anything like that. And it's got a little carabiner, which I usually use. I hook it to my belt clip and then I, you know, I, I walk around with it. If I need power with the phone, I just plug up the plug the uh, USB into it and boom, I've got some, I got power. I can recharge my phone something like three or four times with that one. And I th think about three or four times with this one. So if I have both batteries with me, I should be able to do uh, a good amount of live streaming. This will not be on the whole day. It'll be on for each second, each time I get up to a, a person and say hi and, and, do an interview with that. So this piece right here, it's just, it's amazing. This is, this is, this is like, I found this the other day and I was so excited to see it and get it. And it works. Uh, it just worked right out of the box. It's not flimsy like any of those other selfie stick uh, looking ones. Um, and it's holding, it's holding both of them pretty well. I might even add a piece of Velcro to strap around it just to be on the safe side. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm also I also boosted the uh, antenna and I got myself one of these. This is a nine decibel uh, Omni Wi-Fi antenna. So if I find another source that I can connect to Wi-Fi wise other than my phone, then I'll do that and I can use this to really send out signal. I'm and I'm really excited about this too because this will work. This will work in many different situations. So uh, right now I have it attached to my phone, but once again, I'm expecting another package to come at the end of the week. Uh, it's not guaranteed, uh, but that might be controlling all my wireless from there. I'm not going to talk about it yet until I have it. So next up, uh, we have um, just one of the best uh, monopods out there in the Sarui P424SR. Uh, and this is uh, this is just it's an amazing thing. It sits almost anywhere. Uh, the one thing about it is those feet. Now, it, on some of these other monopods, they have feet that are just super small. Except these are bigger, <laughs> and and of course with the more spread, you can set this down. Uh, you can set this on carpet that that has uh, padding underneath it, and it's not going to fall over by any means. See, you see how I'm just kind of doing that, and it, it's bouncing. Yeah, it's going to bounce. That's how it works. But it's still standing, and I I use this all. What was it two? This is my second or third year in using this tripod, and I it, I'm just amazed. I've always been concerned that somebody will knock into this, but. It hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood and knock on other wood. So uh, the whole idea is that, you know, this will this can easily set up. Plus, I can pick it up and I can walk around with this uh, with the legs out. And I rarely bump into anybody with it. And once again, I, I get it set up. I try and find a good corner to put it into. So nobody will go into that corner and knock it over. But uh, if I have to do, uh, if even if I have to do interviews where I'm holding the can, the uh, the tri the tripod mount, I can. Plus, I got I put on a nice little strap so I can put it over my shoulder and walk around. And this thing will just sit uh, like a carrying case, and it's just, it's just amazing. I, I I'm really excited about this. 
Um, finally, the last piece uh, that puts it all together is the Cam Caddy uh, Scorpion stabilizing camera. And what's really cool about this is I put the camera on, I can put the lights on top, and I'm not showing you the LED lights. Uh, of course, I'm using the newer lights and a couple others, so I haven't decided which one I'm going to put on here yet. But I can put the LED lights on top, and as you can see, uh, I have on the PTZ, I have the Webcaster X2 right here also attached to one of the mount attachments. Of course, the light will be right here, and we'll be good to go. That's it. That's that's my, my rig for CES 2019, NAM 2019. Now, coverage for CES 2019. My good friends at Qualcomm have invited me to CES. They've helped. Uh, and, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be at their press conference and we'll be getting coverage. And then, uh, and then of course, you'll be seeing that over on geekazine.com and youtube.com forward slash geekazine. And then uh, we'll also be in the booth uh, first thing Tuesday morning where we'll be covering uh, what they're going. Basically, one of the big things that they're going to be talking about at CES this year is 5G. And I'm going to be covering the uh, auto side of 5G. You'll be buying cars with the ability to put a connect up to whatever plan uh, you decide and, the, and using the newer protocol 5G. Now, we're going to be talking about the two protocols that they have right now for 5G, and we're going to be talking with experts and uh, and people at Qualcomm and showing you what you need to look for when you're getting ready to uh, go to this next step in wireless technology. And I'm really excited about it because it helps things like this go even better. And, and CES by CES 2020, 5G devices could make CES very live. People coming in with their phones, people coming in with rigs like this, people coming in and just being able to stream and nobody's really stepping over other people's feet and everybody's getting their feeds out. And that's what's really sweet. Really excited about that. So um, other than that, CES 2019, I have some, I have appointments with a lot of different companies, a lot of cool new products. Um, and, and the best thing, the one thing about CES is some of these products, they're there as prototypes in hopes to get somebody interested in uh, taking the company to the next level or buying the company or uh, whatnot. So you might see products that come out there that are working prototypes, but you know you might not see them for three or four years because they need to really get them all lined up and ready and then get investors involved and get and get companies involved. And, and they might not come out in the original brand name that you see on uh, on the show floor. So that's what's really exciting is, is I get to see a lot of cool new products. And I'm also going to be doing some judging. Uh, as you know, this last year, I went to South Korea for Made in Korea. And they, are, they have an area in uh, CES over at the Sands. I will be going there and I'm going to be one of the judges of some of the products that uh, they'll be giving awards to that evening. And that's pretty exciting too. Some other uh, stuff is it's just going to be going mad uh, and, and finding new products. And you'll see uh, it starts uh, Sunday night at about 7 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 6 p uh, It'll be about, uh, let's see, it's about, about 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time or uh, 4, 5 p.m. Uh, uh, Centr uh, Pacific time. That's where I'm going with that. Anyway, the whole the whole idea is through at that point you'll start to see some of the products out there. Over on go over to facebook.com forward slash geekazine. You'll see the live video, raw live video, but you'll get an understanding of where I'm going. And then of course I'll record all of this and put it into uh, regular content video, which you'll see over on youtube.com forward slash geekazine and geekazine.com. Now, like I said, even though this is 4K. Because I'm doing the streaming aspect of it, I can't stream and record at the same time uh, in 4K. So I'm going to have to, I'm actually going to be going back down to 1080p 60 frames a second. And, uh, and so this can stream at 720p so I can do the full thing. And of course, once 
I get a newer camera to bump up that quality so I can do 4K, I'll, I'll start doing 4K again. So, And there might be a couple interviews you won't see on the live stream that will be 4K. Just uh, putting that out there as well. So anyway, that's the rig. I'm going to have all those, all those parts in the show notes. You can check it out and get a rig yourself if you want to uh, get ready for whatever event you're going to to do interviews. So my name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. Of course, you can find me over at Facebook, Geekazine, Twitter, Geekazine, and YouTube.com forward slash Geekazine. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell notification on YouTube for the next video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you. If you're at CES, come find me. Let's say hi. Let's talk. And until next time, you guys geek out, and let's let's do some recording. Take care.